So what we're going to do is we're going to cover how to model this Gatorade bottle in splines. I'm going to choose a pretty front-on shot with almost no perspective to it. There's a slight amount, but it's okay. I'm going to make sure that I see my numbers, 324 by 700. I'm going to make a plane that has those same numbers put into it. so that it matches my image. I'm going to hit M on the keyboard. Brings up my material editor, or I hit this button. Come to the diffuse, choose bitmap, find my image that I want. We'll see that it's added into our shader. I'm going to hit Assign Material to Selection. You'll see it changes gray color, but I want to see the image. So I'll hit Show Shaded Material in Viewport. Now it's offset. It's a wrong rotation. So I'll just change the numbers inside of the model. Now that's fine. I'm just hitting F3 and G to get rid of the grid. And I want to model from usually the front image, so I'm just going to rotate this to match what I want. W to increase one window. And I'm going to start out with a line. I'll show two ways of how to build this. If I was to start out with this and I'm just clicking around, but I don't see my lines, I see it right there. So what's happening is they're right on top of each other. So I just need to choose my image and push it behind, way behind the grid. So now it pops in. And I'll redo this. So normally you want to start out with building half of a shape. I'm just going to do basic, basic matching. And I'm just holding shift to get straight up and down lines and then just letting it go to get normal. And I'll just hit right click to break it and there's half my model. And hit J to get rid of the border grid. And there's my line. I'm going to hold shift and drag and make an instance copy. So that whatever I do to one side happens to the other. Hit J to get rid of that grid. Then I'll add lathe. Now when I add lathe, it should work, but my object is a little thin. So what's happening is it's going off of the pivot, so that this little axis. So I can either change it two ways. So you'll see the model, it's in the center. I want that line running straight down this line here. So what I can do is one way to affect it inside the lathe axis, manually move it myself till I get it to the shape that I want. That's one way. The other way is to do it in the hierarchy, affect pivot only. And now you can move this right down the center. And when I add my lathe, it revolves around that. Now you see these points up here. Usually if they're close enough, you just got to hit weld core. In this case, they're not, they're not close enough. They need to be a little extra added help in edit poly. So. But depending on how you build it, the line was closer to each other. You'll see that they actually weld in right there. If not, then you'll just do it inside of an edit poly border, 
I'm gonna hold Control and click on Vertex. That grabs the selection. I'm gonna hit Weld and jack that render or that weld up as much as it can, so all of them are centered. And do the same to the bottom. And that's one way. But what I like to do is I like to build off of a symmetrical piece. Instead of guesswork with the pivot and the line, I'm going to build from a rectangle. A rectangle is going to give me a pivot right down the center. So I'll choose any point on the model. Convert to edible spline. I'm just going to grab all these points and hit corner. Hold shift, drag, make an instance copy. So whatever I do to one side, does to the other, just so it makes modeling a little bit easier for you. And I'm going to grab everything and divide it. And that gives me split right down the center. Now the line is perfectly there. I don't have to worry about any guesswork. Now I'll grab the points and start to move them where they match. And again, the perspective is a little off, so I just kind of do a little guesswork in that area. Move this up to the top. Now I need to add some lines down the center of this so I can move around. So I'm just going to divide a few more times. Right click, select them all, right click and choose corner. I'm just moving these into place where I see fit. Grab those and push them back a bit just so I can start to see that little indent and I get a better idea of where my points are showing up. So I'll move those up a bit. I don't need these, so I'm just going to select them and hit delete. Now I can start to move these points. And I'm going to move these to pretty much the high and low points of the, the reference model because I know that when I add a smooth onto these verts that it's going to round them out and they'll contour to what I would expect and you'll see in a little bit. And it's easier to work with less, less vertexes like this than if it was to be a more exact shape. And I'm not going to model the cap. I'm just going to bring that down because the cap is just a basic, easy shape compared to what we're doing with this right now. And just refining those a little bit more. And if I hit refine, I can actually click and choose wherever I want to add these vertexes. So that's another way instead of just divide. And what these are going to be, are these are going to be the little tracks for when the screw happens.
and that's pretty decent shape for everything. Maybe I'll push this in a little bit more just to really showcase that. So now I'll grab all these verts minus a few, right click and choose smooth. And you'll see it rounds everything out some little bit more than others. So obviously I want these ones to just be sharp edge. So right select them, right click corner, same with these, select them, right click corner. And the bottom two, I don't really need that. Um, I'll manually do that corner. And then I can start to move these around to get the shape that I want. You'll never be 100%. You'll always be about 80 to 90%. That's pretty decent, at least. This, I want that to be to a corner. Move that down. I just want to refine it one more piece just to get the little taper happening in that. And for this one, I'm going to manually do it. I'm going to use fillet or fillet, whatever you want to call it. If I just hold down the arrows and I do whatever I want, then I'll choose to about a distance that I'm okay with. Now most of the time these aren't flat. I need to add a little bit of a bow into them. So I'll just click a few times and raise that up. So there's that little indent underneath the bottle. And there we go, and there's our profile shape. But I know that this needs to have a hole on the top. So really I don't need the so I can just select that and delete. Now if I do lathe, that looks way better than the last one, right? Now you'll see it's kind of low res. I can see faceted. I can count the edges. You don't really want that. Now we want to increase this. So I'll go to what I think works with it. Now when I model, I always model with a, t with a cross, one running down right down the horizontal and run down the center of the vertical. It's always good to get in the habit of modeling like that, just so if you have to model off of sections, you can easily duplicate and move around. Rare do I model with at least one flat edge like this, very rare occasions. But in this case, let's just leave it at a T cross. That's not that bad. As you gotta imagine in the scene, it'll be about this distance, if anything. Rare are you this close, unless you're doing an actual Gatorade commercial. Most of the time it's this at, at the most distance, if anything, maybe really this big in your render. So now I can look at this and there's a good amount of edges down this, but maybe I wanna change that up. I wanna lower them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down edit poly or edit spline, turn this, if I go under interpolation and I jack this number all the way down, you'll see what happens. It makes it way more low res. So the higher I go, the more edges it adds to it. Maybe three is a pretty decent number. Let's see how far I go. So five and six are overkill. So I'm going to go with three on this one. And for those edges, I'm just going to go in there and remove them later. But for the most part, everything else is pretty decent on it. Now you'll see that it's like paper thin. This model should not be paper thin. It should have a thickness like any real bottle or cup or bowl should have. So there's two ways of doing it. One, we can just add a shell modifier to it. And you'll see it actually thickened it out, but it pushed it out in the wrong direction. If I increase that number, bleh. 
It's not exactly what I want. I don't want to mess up the original profile that I did. So I'm gonna jack that number back to zero and I'll mess with the inner amount to push that number in. It's about right there. If I see through my model and I start to move those numbers, you'll see that what's happening with it. Now all these extra edges in here, I don't really need them. So if I add it at a poly, I can grab edge, grab all of these, and I'm just gonna remove them. Loop, control backspace. Edge, loop, control backspace. And I can just keep doing that until I low res the hell out of this. And I would just keep going more and more and more. But that's kind of tedious. I'd rather just do it from the start. So in edible spline, what I can do is I can actually create an outline or shell inside of it. So if I select all the edges or segments and I look for outline, you'll see right there, if I click and drag it, it creates the equivalent of a shell inside or out. Clearly I want inside. So about right here is probably good. And again, I don't want that little edge inside there because that'll really mess me up. So I'll just delete that. Now look around this, anywhere I can clean this up and I can just get rid of those verts manually right now. Just select them and delete them. Change these to corner and I'll move this top one flat. About right there. And if I wanted, I can remove more of these, but for right now, to hell with it. So I turn on my lathe, and there we go. They're all flat on the inside, no extra work. Maybe it's a little too thick, but that's all right. I would have changed that a little bit more in the outline. But for now, let's say it's okay. Now I want to get rid of these extra edges running on the top of this. So I'm going to add, add a poly, grab these edges that I want to get rid of. loop and control backspace gets rid of edges and vertexes it's not fine with that now these things should most likely run at an angle they should never run straight across so you could automatically think oh I'll just rotate them yeah that kind of works but if you really look at it you're going to start to see that there's a little indent happening right here and if I was to really increase it offset that you'll see it even more you don't want that so what I typically do is I'm going to add an FFD modifier to them an FFD will allow you to bend anything however you see fit now there's a few options 2x2 by 3x3 two, three by three, 4x4 four by four, or a box I want 2x2 two because two I just want one side moving up and the other down if I wanted to I can add a 3x3 three three, which I'll actually add right now just to show you what it'll do 3x3 three will give you more of a curve happening. So I select one edge, and you'll see it starts to bow. If I grab the center and move it down, you really start to see it's gonna, it's gonna smooth those transitions out. But I don't want that. Maybe you do, I don't. I want these to just run sharp right across. So two by two, open that up, control points, and move those up, and move those down, and there you go. Now, yeah, this probably should really coil around and be just one line. But from this distance, which most likely is in your render, are you going to notice that it should be one thing? You're going to see those things happening. And you're going to be like, oh, wow, cool. That thing actually has the little tracks in it. That's very good attention to detail. Yeah, more attention to detail would be to actually model it correctly. But hey, this works for what it needs to be. Now maybe that edge is a little too sharp, so I'll add an edit poly on top. We rarely ever want to go down the stack. Edge loop, and I'm just going to champ for this. Push those numbers out a little bit. And add a segment inside. Now I'm happy with that, but you'll see this little faceted happening to the normals. I want to soften those normals or smooth those normals out. So 
going to grab all the faces, come over here to Auto Smooth, click, and you'll see that fixes right there. It's pretty good. now I actually want to add this label onto it or at least a label so what I want to do is I'm going to grab the model choose these edges that I want and hit ring hold control and click on polygons that grabs the last selection and I'll hit R and scale out holding shift just a little bit Right there, see that happen? And I'll choose um, clone to object to make it two different models. And I'll select the faces that I want, and you'll see that's two different pieces. I hit M on my keyboard to bring up my material editor. I'm going to choose another sphere, diffuse, bitmap, and I'm going to choose a pre made logo that I already added. Hit open, assign the model show shaded material and viewport and you'll see that it actually adds the color now I don't see my logo with the little G in the lightning bolt but all I gotta do is I actually need some unwraps to this because this thing is not unwrapped so if I add unwrap UVW there we go now if I edit this so my eyes don't bleed I'm gonna turn off this little horrible checker pattern it's right there and just to see what's happening, I'm going to turn checker, checker. I see my model has nicely squared tech, squared checkers. You always want that. But I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to cylindrical map it. I'm going to choose X, Y, or Z, whichever one's the best. Z is the best one. I'll check cylindrical map. You'll see that these little corners, I want to start to scale this. So I'm going to go into freeform mode right here. And you'll see these little corners, my locator changes. I want the corners on the tops and bottoms. So I'm going to hold shift and move straight out until I start to get these more squared. Right now that's pretty squared, but I'm a little picky. So I'm going to go a little bit more. But right there is pretty good. Now if I choose my Gatorade logo, you'll see right there. you'll see that it's actually tiling around. Because really that image just duplicates all over the place. Anything that's from this square, if I turn this on, you'll see that it's tiling around the scene. So now it's just a matter of scaling it down to the appropriate amount that I would want. Make sure that the seam isn't showing. Move that off. And there I go. And just a little bit more finessing. There's my Gatorade bottle. If I want to fake that it's see through, I'll just hit Alt X so I can go see through mode. Now I'll just hit render to see what this looks like quickly. There you go. And the same thing can be done to say um, wine bottles, uh, other bottle, any any bottle, any anything that's an exact lathe lathe object. So cups, bowls, uh, wine glasses, anything that you see that's most likely cylindrical. And that's it.